All right, Coach, if you want to start us off with an opening statement whenever you're ready. All right, so unusual um, week, you know, kind of having to put three days into one. You know, we're only going to practice once this week, so uh, that's highly unusual and quick turnaround with the morning format practice. So pretty challenging. Don't have practice update for you because I'm not out there. Uh, practice is still going, so um, – well, unusual not to be able to give you a whole lot of info on that, but good to play at home. You know, really hope our crowd comes out. Hope people don't, you know, sit and say, well, we'll just wait for SEC games. You know, having a crowd is impactful to your players, to their performance. It's impactful to recruits when recruits come into the stadium. So really urge fans to come out. Excited for the first walk that we've had through the Grove. First time actually stepping foot in the Grove. So personally excited for that. But we need people to come out. And, um, you know, everybody wants a top 25 program. Well, let's let's put an atmosphere like a top 25 program so players feel that and recruits see that as well. All right, John, start us off. Hey, Lane, uh, just wanted to get a kind of update on how you're feeling and um, how you've kind of uh, progressed uh, through this. I feel great. Zero symptoms. Um, feel 100%. I mean, I, you know, I guess you don't need doctors with these loop bands. You know, looking back over the numbers, kind of crazy that before I even knew I had it, you know, recovery percentages were down 20s and then the day after I got my recovery was 1%. So um, this morning I was at 90. So kind of crazy that this little thing is a loop commercial for you. Whoop. But, um, and I actually remember reading in the PGA tour how they were using them to find COVID before it was happening. So uh, that's crazy, but I'm doing great. We'll go to Michael. Hey, Lane. Uh, Scotty Walden, uh, I believe, is the youngest coach uh, in, in college football right now at 31. Um, I believe you were the youngest coach uh, back in 2008 when, when you were at Tennessee. What were some of the biggest challenges as a, a young coach and, and what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned in you know, the last you know, 13 years or so? And, and do you have any advice for Scotty on, on how to be a successful young coach? Well, I think the first time, the Raiders part was extremely challenging because you have players that were older than you, um, you know, when you're dealing with NFL. But in general, I think, you know, relying on people that have done it before and have a good staff around you. And uh, there's no recipe to create experience. And I've learned that they're just, that's, a, that's life. That's coaching, parenting, whatever your job is, you know, you just, it takes experience to, to go through things and learn um, how you'll handle them. You can read, you know, you can, you know, kind of channel what you remember of people you worked with and things come up. That's helpful. But a lot of times you got to go through it and figure it out on, on your own. So um, I would say just really utilizing um, people's opinions and people that have done it before. David? Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Lane, uh, you know, we, we saw Kale Nation attempt the first uh, PAT in the game Monday night. Uh, then it was Caden Costa from there on out. Just what you thought of Caden's performance. Uh, kid was in high school less than a year ago, and for him to step up like that under that kind of pressure. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, it ain't like he got to start off with a chip shot. So, uh, you know, knew he was really talented, obviously, um, you know, and so it was great to see him go in, perform like he did, and gave us more confidence as the game grew. So that's, um, you never know with true freshmen what's going to happen, uh, regardless of how they practice. So uh, probably him and Taishim were, you know, the really 
bright spots of guys that went in and looked like they've been doing it for a long time. We'll go to Nick. Lane, you talked a little bit after the game about the uh, the couple of targeting penalties. Just uh, from when you went back and watched the tape, did you see anything that maybe you didn't see live? And do you address that with the team at all, or do you kind of tell them to keep playing the same way? No, I mean we're not stupid. You know, we're not going to get penalties. So, um, unusually, I was for the first time I was able to see it better watching TV than I was in the game or or on the watching the coaches tape. So, um, you know, we've obviously emphasized it, talked a lot about it this morning to them in the team meeting. Um, rules are what they are. So you can disagree with them all you want, but they're, they're rules. So you got to change and, you know, that can be done. Not, not, I mean, there's going to be some, sometimes, I mean, the game isn't in slow motion. So, you know, when people want to say, Oh, it's easy to enforce the rule. Well, guess what? The game's not played in slow motion or rewind. So when that happens in a split second and the guy lowers his helmet, so the target moved, okay, it's a little difficult. So, you know, when someone wants to say the rule has been in place forever, it should be really easy to coach. Well, you know, it ain't in slow motion and we don't get instant replay to, to change our mistakes. So the player can't go back. When he screws up and misses his assignment and does the wrong thing, he don't get instant replay to change. Good to Paris. That was kind of that was kind of long-winded answer for you. Hey Lane, um, what is Taiwan Malone's development like at this point, and and do you see him becoming a, a factor for you guys on the line there? I hope so. Um, he was set back with injury and so really had not practiced very much. Um, you know, anticipate him practicing more and hopefully playing this week. We need him. Go back to John. Lane, what would you kind of want to see your team kind of sharpen uh, offensively on, on Saturday? And what type of, I guess, small steps would you want to see them make uh, in, that, in that contest at home this week? Penalties. Um, you know, way too many penalties, crucial penalties in the game that cost us a lot of yards and, and points. And defensively, to finish the game better, you know, we have two fourth downs where we're not aligned right that are touchdowns there. Um, you know, so I think we let up a little bit, obviously. You know, look at the yardage in the first half and points compared to the second half. And we were still playing our normal guys. So, um, you know, we got, we got to finish better. Go back to David. Lane, just kind of following up on that, I guess just the obligatory question of uh, your thoughts on this Austin P team. I mean, they did beat Chattanooga last weekend. Yeah, and they played really well since that coaching change last year and the strange season with the spring season. So they're playing really good. Uh, you know, they are challenging on defense um, and offense. So um, they play really, really hard. So we're going to have our hands full. And we got we to improve from week one to week two, and we've got a lot shorter week than they do. Back to Nick. You talked about this a little bit. In your mind, what was the cause of the defense kind of letting up there in the second half? Um, I don't know. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes not an excuse. It shouldn't happen. But, you know, it's the same thing when, you know, you look at a score and you got 42 points at half. Well, you don't usually score 84 points. So, you know, it, sometimes it happens a little bit. And, um, you know, we self-inflicted, like I said, two fourth downs that we can stop them and we're not aligned, aligned right. And they score two touchdowns. Um, and then we kept drives alive with crucial penalties. Um, you know, so good thing is we did limit explosive plays for the most part, even in the second half. Any more questions for coach? All right. Thanks coach. All right, guys. Have a good week. Thanks.